Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm um, like to call to order our school committee meeting of August 24th, 2022. Uh, the first thing on our agenda is to approve uh, today's agenda and see if anyone has any changes they'd like to recommend uh, to the agenda. And hearing none, uh, we'll consider the agenda approved. Uh, next on the um, agenda is assistant, uh, the superintendent's update, and I'll turn it over to our acting superintendent, Janet Sheehan. Ms. Sheehan. Thank you, Chair Rose Marin. Uh, we are very excited to report that we are ready to open our schools for staff on August 29th. Um, we'll be ready to open for our students in grades 1 to 12 on Wednesday, August 31st, and for our preschoolers and kindergartners on Tuesday, September 6th. Um, please be reminded um, that the schools will be closed on Friday, September 2nd, and Monday, September 5th for the Labor Day weekend. Um, everyone has been working very hard to make sure we have a great start to the school year. We want to thank our teachers and support staff who've been preparing their classrooms to welcome students. Thanks to our custodians um, who have the schools ready with everything sparkling and especially the floors. Um, we'd like to thank our director of facilities, Bill Ritchie and his staff. They have uh, made sure that the school grounds are groomed and mulched and they have been working all summer on uh, maintenance projects. We are welcoming um, approximately 50 new teachers and approximately 25 more support staff members this year. Um, our new teachers participated in our teacher orientation this week. Uh, it is the largest number yet. All have been assigned mentors and they enjoyed a, um, a meeting um, they enjoyed meeting them actually at an event yesterday at Curry College that was planned by our mental leaders. Um, there were approximately 15 to 20 resignations over the past months. So we've been working very hard um, to fill those positions over the summer. We have the same challenges as school districts across the country as we continue to need additional substitute teachers, paraprofessionals, food service workers, and community school staffing. Um, we would like to wish all the best to Food Services Director Jackie Morgan, who recently resigned after giving 22 years of exemplary service to the Milton Public Schools. Jackie has a transition plan in place that will allow us to open as usual, and she will be mentoring our next director. We wanna thank Jackie for that, and we offer her very best wishes as she continues to pursue her career goals. We um, accepted um, letters of retirement from the following educators after many years of dedicated service to our Milton students and families. Kathy Mulligan, a kindergarten teacher from the Cunningham School, um, just retired. Um, this summer, um, Karen McGrath, special education teacher at the Pierce Middle School retired and Elaine Coughlin, instructional aide at the Tucker School, retired. Um, we do have an enrollment update this evening. The total enrollment in the schools as of today is 4,378 and the breakdown is as follows. Collie caught 587 students, Cunningham 639, Glover 637, Tucker School 459, the Pierce Middle School, 971 students, and Milton High School, 1,086 students. We have set dates for our school open houses. And again, this, this information will be, you know, will be in the blog and also in the, the uh, principal's newsletters. The Pierce Middle School open house will be September 8th. Cunningham will be September 13th. Milton High School will hold its open house on September 15th. The Collicott School will have open house on September 22nd, along with the Tucker School on September 22nd, and the Glover School will have 
their open house on September 29th. Um, another um, uh, reminder that September 12th um, will be applied music lessons registration at Milton High School that will, um, that will open at 7 p.m. And on September 8th, uh, 28th rather, sorry, at 6 p.m., there is a Katie Greer presentation in the Milton High School Auditorium. This has always been a very popular event for our parents and guardians. Um, we'd also like to remind families um, that we have added four morning professional development days for teachers, which are late start days for students. And those dates, again, will be in our communications with families. Those dates are Friday, September 23rd, Friday, October 28th, Tuesday, January 17th, and Friday, March 31st. Um, so please you know, watch for, um, for your newsletters from the individual schools and um, updates also in the superintendent's blog. Um, special thanks go to Stephanie O'Keefe. Um, I'd like to recognize her for maintaining communications with our families throughout the summer. Stephanie assists us with the blog, with Facebook and Twitter. She supports staff in creating the some more newsletters. Um, and she, she truly is a communications expert. Um, in fact, she just created a, um, a video to welcome back our 500 staff members. So we're very excited about sharing that as our, our, um, as our teachers and support staff um, uh, come into the auditorium on Monday morning. And a final thanks goes to our school committee, our parents and guardians and the community at large for supporting the school year 2022 and 2023 budget. Um, thanks to you, um, you have given us the, the tools, the resources and staffing that we need to meet our goals of the strategic plan to address the needs of our students and to focus on academic excellence. So we thank you for that. We're very excited about being so well equipped as we start the new school year. Thank you. I believe um, Claire is trying to You're on mute, Ada. Is trying to enter the meeting, if she can be elevated. She's she's not in the attendee room anymore. I uh, also don't see anyone by that name. Thank you, thank you, um, uh, Assistant Superintendent. Um, Acting Superintendent Sheehan for your presentation. Appreciate hearing about all that's been done uh, to prepare our schools uh, to be open. Ah, welcome, Claire. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> um, it's, it's wonderful to hear how many new staff we've uh, been able to hire. Um, that is, that is a, a, is that a record number for Milton Public Schools? It's, it's, it is a record number as far as I know, and uh, I should have said thanks to Dr. McKinney for his, uh, for his hard work and hiring as well. Yeah. And we've had, um, had a lot of support in the hiring process this year. We've had teachers who've come in and served on interview committees. They're referred to central office and between Dr. McKinney and our human resource specialist, Laurie Dunn, they've done an outstanding job. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for, for all you've done to get, get our schools ready and, and for the whole team. Uh, much, much appreciated. Any, any other comments or questions from school committee members? Okay, move on. Uh, oh, uh, Dr. Carroll? Um, just, a, just a one quick question. Um, I know that um, some members of the community have wondered about Tuesday the 6th as the first day of kindergarten and pre-K also being election day um, where our, our schools are being used as polling places. And I was just wondering if you could um, remind people sort of the 
protocols that are in place to make sure that that runs smoothly and just reassuring parents that the um you know the security concerns and everything else are are all being addressed Yes, Member Carol, you did ask us to um, to share that this evening, so I'm sorry I omitted that. Um, yes, we would like to reassure parents that um, that things are very much in place for voting. There is guidance for uh, the voters to enter the buildings. We have a police officer on duty. Um, we have our custodial and teaching staff very vigilant. Uh, but th there is a lot of guidance for those entering the school buildings um, in order to vote. And uh, they, they, uh, there are very specific entrances and exits for that. So I really think that, um, I think that the, the town sort of has a down pat around um, the setup and uh, around security and uh, the school staff as well um, have been accustomed to having these voting days in the buildings and, um, we do everything we can to keep everyone safe and uh, to uh, to have a successful voting day. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll move on um, in our uh, agenda. We have a number of handbooks to uh, to approve, <clears throat> um, and uh, I don't know. If Superintendent Sheehan, if you would like to um, go through these with us, or or uh, since this is under your uh, um, item on the agenda, um, uh, we can go through one at a time um, and see if there are any comments um, or suggestions. Um, and and um, uh, what what I was thinking is is um, we could we could do this one of two ways. We could vote on each of them one at a time, or we could go through them all to see if there are changes and suggestions and vote on them all together. I don't know. Um, I, I guess my inclination would be the latter, uh, if if that's okay with you all. So just just to um, just to preface this um, process. Mm -hmm. We do have our um, we we do have our um, school attorney um, look at this look at all of the handbooks and make sure that um, our policies and practices are are updated and in place and um, that is very much a part of this process. Um, our um, you know our principals update their information every year and and send them to us and then we forward the information to the to um, to the, the school attorneys. So um, we are, we're very careful about what we put out. That doesn't mean we may not have an error here or there, but, um, but they have been edited um, very carefully and, um, and uh, we, we hope that things are in place that, uh, you know, that um, everyone can follow and, uh, and sign off on. Very good. Well, thank you. Let's, let's start at the top of the list then uh, with the first being the elementary uh, handbook. Uh, are there any comments uh, or suggested changes or questions? That one. Uh, hearing none, I will go on to uh, the Pierce Middle School handbook. Any comments, suggestions, or questions? And Pierce Middle School handbook. There's a lot to go through. I I, I know, but it, it, it as as Superintendent Chin uh, said, there's there's been a lot of of um, uh, a lot of work on these before they they got to us, and they will be going out to our whole school community very very soon. Um, okay. Uh, next on our list is the Milton High School handbook. Any comments, questions, suggestions? Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, we have the Milton Public Schools staff handbook. Any comments, questions, suggestions? No. 
And last, we have the athletics handbook. Um, any comments, questions, or suggestions on those? Okay. Um, so, um, if the, oh, I see Member Varghese. Member Varghese? I just had a, a general question, and this was about red, residency. I also saw it in the uh, blog this week. So I just wanted to ask, how have you managed this so far in terms of residency verification? I'd love to know, as a new, new member, I'd love to know more about the process and how often it's looked at. Dr. McKinney, would you like to respond? Dr. McKinney has been very much involved with our um, registrar. Great. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, have, I have been involved in the past, but most recently, Dr. McKinney has been working closely with Serena Burke. Awesome. Great. Yes, thank you. Um, I already met with um, Serena and Marty McKinney and uh, Brad, our uh, information systems person. And we meet monthly. We've been going through uh, residency uh, questions, student assignments. We had a meeting last week. It's a busy time. We know it's an anxious time for some parents, uh, but we do follow the process that's outlined by policy and outlined on the website and ensuring everybody is a resident of Milton who's coming into the schools. Um, we also made a concerted effort to reach out to those that are attending some of the regional schools. Um, they weren't aware of the process, so they're submitting their paperwork now. So um, I would say we're working on it on a daily basis and making sure that mm -hmm. uh, we're serving everybody in Milton the best we can. Great. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Dr. Carroll? I think, um, so just, I think this is the right sort of um, cadence for it that everyone establishes residency when they're entering pre-K if, if applicable, and then again, kindergarten or whichever grade they first enter Milton Public Schools, and then reestablish it again for sixth grade and again for ninth grade, um, right? So everybody has at least those checkpoints of reestablishing their residency, but then also if anyone moves within the town of Milton, you have to reestablish your residency once again um, with your new address. Um, and I I saw in the hand in the high school handbook, I thought it was really helpful that it that section links to the full residency policy. I didn't see that in the other handbooks. Mm -hmm. um, there are different versions explaining and outlining the policy, which is good. But I, I did notice that that seemed helpful because it um, can sort of lead people to where they may find more detail about exceptions to the residency policy, you know, to learn whether or not one of those may apply to their family circumstances or not. Um, so. Just, I'm not suggesting that the handbook be rewritten to link to all the different policies, but I did notice that seemed kind of helpful um, for people if they want to learn more in the electronic version. Okay. Superintendent Chan. Um, if I heard correctly, um, we have about 30 families right now who have changed residency, who have moved and and many within Milton, but um, we we don't always know whether they're still in Milton or not. And we understand that this is really an inconvenience for many parents, and uh, we feel badly about that. You know, it's a lot of paperwork, and and it it is inconvenient and time consuming. But when we consider um, when we consider the cost of of educating our students, and we have. Um, increasing enrollment and, and crowded schools, we really have to be vigilant. So we hope that parents will understand and, uh, and follow those, those residency guidelines. Makes sense, yeah. Great. Um, any other questions on the handbook? Uh, uh, if not, I think we'll bring this to a vote. Um, and um, I think I will 
combine the five into one motion. Uh, the motion would be to approve the 2022-23 Milton Public Schools Elementary Handbook, Pierce Middle School Handbook, Milton High School Handbook, Milton Public Schools Staff Handbook, and Athletic Handbook. I have a second, please. Second. Thank you. Um, and we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Member White? Yes. Member Varghese? Sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Member Rostani? Yes. Dr. Carroll? Yes. Chair Rosemarin? Yes. Uh, it's unanimous. Very good. Thank you all, and thank you to the whole team of people that were involved in putting these handbooks together. There's a lot of work that went into it and, and we, it's much appreciated. Thank you for your approval. Sure. Um, so next on our agenda, uh, we have citizen speak. Uh, we have uh, 15 minutes set aside for a citizen speak. Um, and uh, we have three minutes uh, uh, per person. Um, if there are people in our viewing audience who would like to uh, speak tonight, if you could please raise your hand and we will promote you um, and uh, be happy to hear you. Would, would you like me to promote the people? Yes, that would be, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, it looks like um, I do not have the rights. So I'm not sure if somebody at Milton Access TV could promote Mr. Fundling. So we have uh, Mr. Jay Fundling. Mr. Fundling, whenever you're ready. Um, hi. My name is May Fundling, and this is my sister Josie. Um, I'm in ninth grade, and I live at 39 Sias Lane. Currently in the Milton Public Schools, we have 20 minute long lunches, depending on the school. This is not long enough to get our food, sit down, and finish lunch. Me and my sister made a survey last year. 122 <laughs> students filled it out, and 77% of people who took the survey said they felt rushed most or all of the time. We think it would be best if lunch was at least 30 minutes long. The CDC says that sufficient seat time is significantly associated with schools providing at least 30 minutes for lunch. Longer lunches in schools give students better nutrition so they can pay more attention in school. We hope you bring this proposal to the superintendent. Very good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate hearing from you. Do we have anyone else with a hand raised? I don't see anybody else. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, then I think we will move on uh, in our agenda. Uh, next uh, item is um, the chair's report. And the first thing on the agenda is to talk about the school committee goals um, that we discussed at our um, school committee retreat. And um, I'm just wondering if we can share this. Um, uh, Superintendent Dexter, do you have the ability to share documents? I don't know. Sorry, I should have thought of this before. Um, I do, but I, I what documents are you trying to share? Sorry, uh, that I don't yeah. have. You don't have that it. on my computer. If you wanted to quickly email it to me, I could probably pull it up. Yeah, yeah. I can there. try to share it. I have it right here. Would you like me to try? It? Yeah, sure. Oh, 
There you go. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, so um, as you see, that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I think we have four goals. Uh, the facilities, uh, which you see um, up top. Um, what are the other ones? A measurable goal alignment, uh, budget, and communication and community engagement. Um, and these were goals that we discussed at our retreat. And then um, each um, each of the goals uh, was drafted by uh, different members of the school committee. And this is our first chance to take a look um, at these uh, draft goals together. And uh, I just want to open it up uh, to see if there are any um, suggestions for changes uh, or thoughts or questions or comments about um, how we might proceed here. Um, I'm looking at my phone to raise my hand, but here we go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Number Ross Denny, thank you. Thank you. I just want to uh, make sure that we take the time to at least try to put them in smart goal format so that um, it's very clear to the public and to the people for whom we expect to operationalize or be partners with us in operationalizing the goals. So they're very clear about what's expected and by when. Um, I don't think we can wordsmith this during this committee meeting, mm -hmm. but um, maybe there's some one-on-one -on -one contact we can make that's within um, the mass general law about how do we make these um, more compliant with that format. Mm -hmm. Good. Any any um, questions or comments about the um, the content of the goals the, that are drafted um, that anybody would like to share? Uh, Dr. Carroll. Um, I agree with member Ross Denny and I think <clears throat> um, so my understanding is that we will bring these back to vote on them not until our next meeting right so that we still have time of the next couple of weeks to continue kind of working to do that formatting um, I think I I do have a question about the framing of the measurable goal alignment goal I completely agree with um, the sort of what is expressed here as a goal for our district. Um, and I'm, I also think we can keep honing this goal to be, this is probably part of that SMART goal alignment process to kind of make it clear what the action steps of the school committee is, you know, are in the um, purview of this of this goal um, and, and that, you know, what is the school committee doing? And then hopefully how is this being reflected in the superintendent's goals and district goals? Um, so I think that's just something I'm still a little bit um, wondering about that, that we could continue to address in, in the, you know, formatting of the goals. I think the other, um, and this came up in our retreat discussion, the other goal areas are a little more straightforward in terms of um, kind of action steps for school committee. Um, and this goal is so important and a little bit less clear cut in terms of, you know, what the school committee is doing and what members of the administration are doing. Uh, member Dr. Carroll, thank you for raising that because when we were um, discussing this during the retreat, um, I want to say the facilitator shared that, you know, we have to be very clear 
about what our authority is, especially um, around supervision, because this is technically something that we would not implement. Um, so the, it, as the supervisor of the superintendent, it's our responsibility to make sure that this work actually happens. This just adds more clarity around what it's what the expectation is for what it will look like when it's done um, because the only other option would be to say you know as the supervisor ensure that these um, measurable goals are incorporated this just adds a, a level of detail um, in terms of what the expected outcome should look like so I welcome any feedback to ensure both pieces the um, supervisory piece as well as um, the clarity piece are both incorporated into what's ultimately this goal. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. I, I think maybe that's something that could be added in is the connect, like the supervision is the um, path for this to occur um, in, in like the work of the school committee. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're on the same page. Yeah. And I wonder, I wonder whether, um, um, a couple thoughts that I have about that, you know, in terms of our role as monitoring the, the growth, um, and progress towards these goals um, that that we should include in the in the language of this goal, um, and that it it <clears throat> also relates to the the work of the metrics advisory team um, that um, that will be coming with recommendations for us um, and um, that is included on our. Uh, draft calendar, which is the next item on our agenda, um, but um, but the these are these are all related, um, and um, I think the the thinking in terms of the calendar uh, was that the the metrics advisory team would make their recommendations once we have the <clears throat> the data available to us is uh, particularly the the spring 2022 MCAS data uh, because we have the raw data um, now but we still need uh, additional um, perspective on on that raw data to and be able to interpret it properly um, but that um, the superintendent's goals that would be incorporating those, um those um goals those growth and and progress goals um would would be based upon the recommendations of the metrics advisory team <clears throat> that would be incorporating the things that you've listed here and in, in the goal which is which are great i think we're we're clear about about that um and i guess the last thing i that i do wonder about is is about what what you got for the equity audit survey results um, and um, that somehow that that will need to be um, clarified about what what specific goals will be set relative to um, um, the results of the of that audit. Any other comments? Does anyone want to look at any of the other goals? I can scroll however they would like. This is the budget goal. Mm -hmm. um, and then on this one, uh, definitely open to input. I know this was one that we didn't have as much time at the retreat to actually discuss. Uh, so these are some ideas and would be interested in what other ideas people may have. Mm -hmm. 
any comments, suggestions, um, you know, we can we can take these and um, um, since we're um, um, if you have comments that that you'd like to send uh, to me in writing, um, we could we can do uh, that um, as well as as any comments that you um, might want to share today, and then we'll bring it back um, to our um, our next meeting, I guess, um, is where we have it, this discussion scheduled. Any further comments? I think also the uh, the facilities goal that was at the top, um, Dr. Carroll, um, I definitely want to get um, Member White's and Member uh, Miranda's comments on that since they'll be heading up the um, facilities advisory committee meeting this year, um, that committee this year. Um, so if you have any comments uh, on that, um, please, please pass them along and, um, and um, Member Rost, any uh, may call on your assistance to help try to work these into smart goals. It's not a strength of mine, I must confess, <laughs> um, but um, I think it would be uh, great to uh, have some help getting that getting that done. Uh, so um, we don't have any other comments on that. We'll move along to the calendar. Um, and um, you received the calendar in your um, in your packet of materials, um, and um, uh, Dr. Carroll, I wonder if if I could trouble you again to to share that document for for me. I, I'm just uh, having trouble navigating uh, there we go thank you so much um, so um, a lot there were a lot of changes made in this calendar um, after our uh, discussion at our our retreat and I just wanted to walk you through just to be sure uh, you see the things that were incorporated um, as you see, we're here. We are at the twenty fourth. We've got our first discussion of school committee goals, and then it's on the calendar for uh, another discussion and follow up vote at our next meeting um, on September seventh. And we also have scheduled for September seventh a um, a data presentation uh, by Vivu, and I'm not sure if she'll be bringing anyone else with us. Um, with her, um, but to uh, review the 2022 uh, year-end data from the end of last school year, which we really haven't um, gotten to see, uh, to be able to get a perspective on on the growth that happened over the course of last year. Um, as we move through um, the uh, calendar, we have also included uh, the four public forums that we talked about, uh, they're scheduled in between school committee meetings. Um, uh, we have the, um, and they're um, to be focused on the, uh, the pillars of our strategic plan. So the first one being October 6th will be a public forum on personalized learning. Um, we continue on through uh, our, in our October 12th meeting. Uh, you'll see there uh, we've, we've plugged in the, a report from the metrics advisory team. We're hoping uh, there's an asterisk there that we will have the, the data from DESE uh, by that time to be able to really process 
uh, the results of the um, the MCAS um, um, exams from last year, um, and um, but that will be moved if if that information isn't isn't yet available then. Um, but then we also put in that same meeting uh, a first discussion about the superintendent's goals so that the two were, will be uh, related to um, to each other that in sort of along the lines of, of the, our discussion on our last uh, set of goals that that we're really wanting the metrics um, to guide our goal setting. Um, and um, um, so that will give us a chance to have our first discussion about the superintendent's goals at that meeting um, on October 12th, and then a follow-up um, on a discussion and a hopeful vote on the superintendent's goal at the following meeting. And then we have uh, site council presentations that begin um, October 12th is the first one with Pierce uh, Site Council, then October 26th, uh, we have Collicott coming um, as we move into November, uh, got Milton High School and Tucker School in the same evening, November 9th, uh, our second public forum on uh, another pillar of our strategic plan, the safe and supportive schools. Uh, November 16th, um, Glover Site Council and beginning uh, presentation and discussion about our FY24 budget, our special town meeting, uh, a fall town meeting will be uh, December 5, 6, and 8 uh, that we now know. So that'll be, that was fit in there. Um, and then uh, December 7th is when we have targeted for the um, the next data presentation uh, from Vivu and uh, again, whatever um, uh, folks from the leadership team that would um, be appropriate to bring along um, to talk about the, um, the data uh, from the fall of, of this school year. Um, moving through uh, December, we've got Sunny, uh, Cunningham Site Council and more discussions of the budget and um, uh, including a meeting with the Warrant Committee, which still needs to be determined. Um, January 11th, we have a public forum on the equity um, pillar of our strategic plan. And um, the, um, we'll have further um, discussion about our, uh, our budget in January. And we've also added in the um, evaluation um, uh, mid-cycle and end of cycle uh, um, uh, um, evaluations for the superintendent that, that uh, seem to catch us a little short this year. Um, so we, we've gotten them calendared and hopefully we'll be able to uh, meet those goals. Um, we've got a program of studies and then our fourth public forum on February 8th um, will be on our budget and that will be combined with our annual budget hearing. Um, and um, we've got some openings in there before we get to um, the reorganization meeting in uh, late uh, April and town meeting. Um, and then the, the, um, the typical end of year, um, end of cycle summit of evaluation and the retiree receptions and, and um, votes, uh, school choice and, and, and the like. So that's that's basically the calendar for the year. Um, this is this is kind of a working document for us, so it will um, be you know updated as as we need to. But I I, um, I hope you 
um, feel that the, the comments and suggestions that were made at, at our retreat were, you know, appear here um, and that you're to your satisfaction. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, uh, feel free. And Member Varghese. Hi, I just had one question. Um, I mean, I, there's so much great information here and I was wondering how can we kind of promote this a little bit more to get more attendees to attend our meetings and all, especially, and as well as the public forum. Um, is there a way to publish this information? Is there, you know, so that people know what, you know, things that parents are interested in as a way to bring in the community? I think it'd be great mm -hmm. I'd love to hear some suggestions if there are ways to do that. Uh, that's a great idea. And we can, we can post this on our, um, our page on the uh, Milton Public Schools website, um, just so that every, we'll have to add a note to it to say that this, you know, can be changed um, as, as um, things change, but, um, but it does give people a full sense of the year. But I, but I also think, uh, Member Varghese, that your, your point about particularly advertising our public forums, um, I, I think we really should um, make a, 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 a definite effort to put that together in, in a way that, that lets everyone know about, about these uh, forums happening, when they'll be, what the topics are, and, and the like. Absolutely. And I know a lot of work goes into them, so it would be great for our community to be aware of how much work goes into it and what we're doing. You know, so and it, I think it would avoid a lot of like stress and all of those things if people are in the loop from the very beginning. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Carroll. Um, thanks. I I would just like to say yes, I really appreciate how our conversation from the retreat I see reflected in the updates that we've made to the calendar. So I definitely appreciate the um, openness to kind of doing some things a little bit differently and also just very intentional, um, you know, way of sort of um, including the important updates that we will be getting. And I'm looking forward to those data presentations and, and so on. Um, and I also just have a quick question, wondering whether we have any updates yet about the hybrid opportunity to sort of like the format of the meetings, if there's any information we can share about where and how these meetings will be taking place. Yeah, we don't have any updates yet. Updates. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, we we did have a, a meeting um, with uh, uh, folks from Milton Access and folks from the town side um, and the um, Council on Aging and Select Board and um, um, Town Administrator and talked about the, the possibilities, um, but we didn't really come to a definitive uh, conclusion. Um, so I'd say it's still a work in progress. Hopefully we'll know we'll know that soon. Um, but that that continues to be our goal is to have to be able to meet in a space that is set up to to do as a hybrid meeting so that um, so that we could be in person, but people could still join us remotely and participate remotely um, if if they so choose. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Member Ross Denny. I want to echo what Dr. Carroll shared about how um, thoughtful our calendar is for this year and reflects some of the things that, uh, many of the things that we discussed during our retreat. Uh, once our goals are finalized, I would love to incorporate checkpoints so we can assess our progress over time in terms of our ability to stay on track because we might learn that, you know, we might have to adjust the deadline or we have to do a course correction because we've learned something new. But once we have some reasonable um, dates, I would love to have those check-ins incorporated into the calendar. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like a great idea. And uh, the we have the um, the superintendent evaluation 
um, components in here, but I don't know. Those are there's just one in the mid mid year and uh, one at the end of the year, and I don't know. I guess it it will kind of depend on what we come up with in terms of our goals and whether whether that will be enough or whether we need something more specific. So let's let's work on that and see see where that goes and and we can update this. I, I really see this as our working document um, to be sure that we know what we're what we're going to try to do and get to this year. But but I think we also need to um, remain flexible. Um, that things things will come up that we didn't anticipate and and, and the like. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's a great idea, Member Stone. So any other comments, questions about the calendar? All right. Thank you. Um, let's take a look here. Um, so next on our agenda is finance uh, subcommittee. Uh, Member White? Sure. We just have one warrant to approve tonight. It's warrant number five, dated August 18th, 2022, in the amount of $117,531.14. I have a second on that warrant. Second. I second. Okay. So we'll do a roll call vote. Um, Dr. Carroll? Yes. Chair Rosemarin? Yes. Member Ross Denny? Yes. Member Vargis? Yes. And me? Yes. So that's unanimous. And that is the end of row finance tonight. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is approval of minutes. Um, we've received three sets of minutes uh, for July 6th, July 29th, and our August 3rd retreat. Um, uh, I looked through them. And I believe that we were all there for all of them. Um, so um, if anyone has any comments or um, corrections uh, for any of those minutes, uh, can you speak now? Um, and if not, we'll move to a vote. Okay, hearing none, uh, I'm gonna add these all three into one vote since we were all here for all of these. Um, so I would move to uh, approve uh, the minutes for uh, July 6th, July 29th, and August 3rd. Can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. Okay, do a roll call vote. Uh, Member Ross Denny? Yes. Dr. Carroll? Yes. Member Varghese? Yes. Member White? Yes. And Chair Rosemary, yes. Very good, thank you. Uh, next meeting agenda items. Um, as we just saw on our calendar, uh, we have um, another discussion of our uh, school committee goals. And I just lost the calendar. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> um, but are there any other items that uh, that anybody knows of right now that you'd like to add to that agenda. Um, the other thing listed is just the spring data presentation that we just oh, talked yeah. about. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, and awesome. then the back to school, you know, updates. Um, Excellent. But like I know, for example, um, policy subcommittee does not meet for the first time until September 13th. So um, we will not have that on our next agenda. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Carroll. Um, okay, so next on our agenda is um, moving into executive session. Um, and I'd like to make a motion to enter executive session to discuss strategy for collective bargaining with the Milton Educators Association and AFSME for the custodial and food service employees. Uh, since to do so, an open session may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the committee. The school committee will return to open session for the purpose of voting on Unit A and AFSME bargaining agreements and will adjourn directly from open session. Um, so I'll take a roll call vote to move into executive session. Uh, Member Ross Denny. Yes, do we need a second? Did you need a second oh, for that? Oh, thank you. Yes, I need a second too. Could you do that too? I'll second. I'll <laughs> thank second you. it and I'll make my first vote. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> ah, Dr. Carroll. Yes. Uh, Member Varghese. Yes. Member White. Yes. And Chair Rosemary, yes, very good. So we'll see you in executive session. And we've been advised to turn off our, uh, to mute our microphones and turn off the video and Zoom. And we'll go into the Google link for executive session and we'll return to open session when we're done. So we'll see you there.
Very good. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, we're back in now in open session. And um, we have left on the agenda is uh, two motions uh, related to our uh, contracts. I'll uh, make the first motion um, made to approve the mem memorandum of agreement between the Milton School Committee and the AFSCME Council 3093 Local 1395 for the period July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2025. Do you have a second? I second. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote on that. Uh, Dr. Carroll? Yes. Member Varghese? Yes. Member Ross Denny? Yes. Member White? Yes. And Chair Rose Marin, yes. Okay, thank you. That one's unanimous. And the second motion is <clears throat> made to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Milton School Committee and the Milton Educators Association for the period July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2025. I have a second, please. Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, take a roll call vote. Member Carroll, Dr. Carroll? Yes. Member Varghese? Yes. Member Ross Denny? Yes. Member White? Yes. And Chair Rosemary? Yes. Very good. So those were both unanimous. And, uh, oops. And I believe that is the, um, up. Oh. Okay, um, I believe that is all we have on our agenda. And um, if I could get a motion to adjourn. Um, Janet has her hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to share when I was leaving executive session, Joe came on. Oh, so that's why I was delayed. Oh, dear. And he, want, he wanted me to apologize to everyone. He okay. felt badly, but he thought 8.30 was a reasonable time to join in, join the executive session. Oh, dear. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to be sure that you all knew that. He wanted you to know. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Well, timing is everything. <laughs> very good. All right. Um, so uh, I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Very I good. second. Second. All right. And uh, roll call vote. Dr. Carroll? Yes. Member Varghese? Yes. Member Ross Denny? Yes. Member White? Yes. And Chair Rosemary? Yes. Very good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.